Sketchy, you made your football league debut for Wickham Wanderers at 16 years of age, came on against Chelsea in the Carling Cup semi-final and against Villa at Villa Park the year before. I guess most would settle for those achievements in their career per se, and yet you're still only 19 years of age. Um, you've crammed quite a bit in, haven't you, really? When you yeah, it. it's very true. I was uh, very lucky to be given my debut when I was so young. Like, I got given my uh, badge, my number, when I was only 16 years old by mm. Tony Adams, so mm. he saw a bit of, bit of me. I was only three months into my uh, apprenticeship when he gave me that, so it was a real real confidence boost for a man like Tony Adams mm. to mm. to have that much so faith he, he took to you again, then he kind of appreciate what you did. Yeah, yeah, he, he talked to me. It was Tony Adams and <coughs> Pete Colley at the time. Oh, right, yeah. They were just uh, so full of uh, just praise. They just kept on praising you. If you did things wrong, they'd tell you, but they wouldn't make mm. you feel down about it. Oh, yeah. So you knew that you'd obviously get better with their with their There's coaching. There's very encouraging ethos around the club. Yeah, yeah, they were very, yeah, very okay. good. I was just going to say, I believe you played under Tony Adams and John Gorman at Wanderers. Yeah. Uh, did you feel Tony perhaps had a greater appreciation of your style than John? or did Nah. It was John just the same, really? Yeah, no. Nah, John, John was brilliant. <coughs> he was uh, probably one of the best coaches, coaches I've ever had. He was... He, he just come into the club with a smile on his face, no matter what. He just mm. up. If if you were down about a, a result, he just uplift your spirits because mm, he yeah. just knew he had so much experience. He knew as easy as you can win a game, you can mm. you can lose a game. Mm. So with him, there was always a positive positive vibe. So I've got respect for for oh, both right. of them. Okay, and um, you're also voted League Two Apprentice of the Year in 2006. Again, you must be extremely proud of such an achievement. What was the criteria there? How did that come about then? Uh, yeah, I think that was based on <clears throat> what you'd achieved in football so far and what your education was like as well. Mm. And uh, I've always been quite a bright a bright student at school, so my education was uh, very good, but also with um, my progress with the first team. Mm. I think that played a vital part. So there's a great emphasis on the academic side of it. Now, yeah, yeah. Like an awareness that you know that you just can't rely on the football side of it. So. Yeah. Yeah, they're very big because if you look at... Like, if you... For instance, me now, because I'm not actually in the football mm, league now, mm, I've got mm. that to fall, to fall back on, yeah, if, yeah. if you like. Mm, okay. Um, <clears throat> although you're born in Scotland, I believe you came through the Oxford United boys system. What memories do you have of uh, your time at United? Yeah, I was, I was born in Scotland, but um, like you say, I, m I moved to Oxford when I was about eight or nine. So I got into football as any boy does, you just pick mm -hmm. up a ball, start playing for your local park team mm -hmm. and uh, Oxford came and scouted me and I had really fond memories there mm -hmm. but unfortunately it didn't really work out. At that time in my life I'd, I'd rather play football for fun mm -hmm. than uh, play seriously so yeah, it yeah. didn't really work out. Okay, I believe you're now taking is it a BTEC in sport with your experience of playing professional football. Have your obje objectives changed regards possibly combining a career with playing non-league at the highest level where, where before you probably I want to make it as a pro footballer. Yeah. Now you've had that taste of it. Does it just change your kind of um, outlook on you know where you might go with it really? Yeah, well, to, to be fair, I've, I've passed my B-tape because oh, right. I, I, I did that in two years so I passed that. But but like you say, I, mm. I'm, I'm just like any other footballer. Like I, They say you don't realise what you've got until it's gone. Mm. Mm. And... Uh, Maybe sometimes mm -hmm. when, when you're playing football every single day, you might go into training and think, ah, oh, like, I'm not really feeling, mm -hmm. not really, I feel a bit ill, I don't really want to play. But now, my uh, mentality is, just give me a ball, I just want to play. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. but, but like you say, I know that might not be, uh, I need to think of a backup plan if football yeah, does not work yeah. out. So, yeah, I have I've inquired about coaching and, and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But like I say, I've always been quite academically yeah, yeah. Uh, intrigued. So, I would like to find out maybe... Maybe a bit of physiotherapist, because whereas mm. I had a bad knee injury, maybe nurse other people to not make the same mistakes and, mm, yeah. and so okay. far. Okay. Um, you're now playing for Southern League, Oxford City. Can you tell us how that came about? Really? Um, <clears throat> like, just at the end of the, the season, when I got told I was let go by Wickham, uh, I had a really bad injury, so I was still, still trying to find my way. Mm. And uh, just basically, to cut it short, I, I realised I was going to have to play part-time for a while and I thought Oxford City, because Mike Ford was always on the phone to me, they're club going places mm, and it's mm. really uh, close by so I thought if I'm going to play part-time uh, I may as well go with a club that's going places and then so that's how it came oh, about. I see, okay. um, have you been surprised by the quality of football at Southern League level and, and what would you say were the main differences from playing in the pro game? In a good position to, to yeah, no, nah, yeah, no. Nah, it's, it's the quality is uh, is still is still quite high. Like you've got you've got players like in in our team, we've got 
an array of players that have played at a higher mm, level mm. in the drop down like Andy Gunn Liam Malone yeah, yeah. so they they all talked to me told me like you can't come into this arrogant big headed mm, because mm. people will people will try and kick you people will try mm. and do everything they can get but to, your to, head. To, to change if you've got that perception a lot of people call mm. it oh it's going to be easy yeah, yeah. yeah until you actually play there I suppose yeah it's yeah no it's, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a real, it's a real culture shock mm. you've got to be able to you've got to be able to uh, still play but be street street smart because mm. a, a, a lot of the players, although there are players that aspire to get higher, some some players just have the mentality of just I just want to kick him if he if he tries to go past yeah, me. Yeah. But there is still quite a lot of quality. Like I've seen what I've been impressed with has mm. been very mm. very. And you got Jermaine guys who played yeah, football. Yeah, yeah, Jermaine, yeah. Jermaine. Like what, what what can we say? He's done he's yeah, done his yeah. fair bit in the in in the pro game, and mm. now he's dropped down and he's he's really good to work with. He does moan a bit, I'll tell you that, but he is a really good player to play with, so... I'm sure he'll appreciate that remote one. <laughs> um, under Justin and Mike's management, City really seem to be heading in the right direction with quality players at the club, like John Gardner, Jermaine at Spurs, you just touched on, George Redknapp, Darren Pond and others. Would you agree Southern Premier Football is a realistic objective uh, you know, for next season? Yeah, very, very true. I mean, we've all talked about The quality about is it. there, isn't it? You know, we, we've all something. talked about it. We, for me, I believe we should get promoted... This year, with mm, with the quality we've got, mm. you just named some some of the players yeah, we've got. Yeah. We've got a lot of players that maybe aren't known to other players mm. that do a massive bit for the yeah, that do yeah. a massive bit for the team. But with with our players, at least playoffs. If we don't at least get playoffs, that will be a disappointing season for mm, us. Mm. But realistically, promotion is our target. Who uh, who was uh, your inspiration as a kid? Then did, did you model your game on anybody else in particular, or not really? Um, <clears throat> I've always. Because uh, my dad's Ni- Ni- Nigerian, mm. I've always like because he always when he when he did watch football, he'd always put the Nigerian games mm, on. Mm. So I I've always just watched. Uh, I would, my favorite player was a Kocha, just oh, for the yeah, skills. Yeah. I'm not really that same type of player as him, no, no. but just for the skills yeah. and the sort of arrogance he brought to mm, the game. Mm. It was just like some of the stuff he did in the game. He wouldn't even dream about doing in training. Yeah, yeah. So he was just he was just of a different mold. But now the new generation, Ronaldo. He's doing mm, his thing. Fantastic. Everybody, everybody, everybody. If you go down the park, you just hear players go, "I want to be Ronaldo. Mm. I want to be Ronaldo." Mm. So, what about you when you play your football? Do you, do you take it in with you and think about it and analyze, or do you just think, right, you switch off? Yeah, no. I when you, as as a player, you can only do you. You can't try and mm. in, imitate anybody else. So no, no. you you can you can do if you go out with them if with the thought of going I'm gonna try and be Ronaldo today, it's just mm. not gonna work. Mm. You can only do you can only do what instinctively comes into your head. Yeah, yeah. And if it works out What off, I mean is you do you say you better what you consider to be a poor performance. Yeah. Does it get to do you, do you take it home with you and worry about it? Yeah you, no you can tell by your mood yeah, not too Yeah, no yeah. like we just had a game yesterday we lost two 0 Yeah yeah. And I had a really good chance to put away header Hedden's not really my forte but it was still quite an easy chance. And I was really disappointed that yeah, after the training. Yeah. I just, when when we lose games, or if we don't, or if I don't do as well as I expect to do, mm-hmm. you, I just just go by myself and just think I don't yeah. really want to talk to anybody. Yeah. Like straight after the game, I just want to go home and just yeah. go what, away. What about um, areas of your game you, you you're seeking to improve? You know? Like it's it's the old cliche with with players with pace. You've always maybe their end product is lacking a bit. You know mm. they, they can beat their man, but can <clears> they can they cross the ball? Mm. So like mm. just just like that, I've just got to improve on my crossing because I am I'm I'm confident nine out of, nine times out of ten if I'm against a fullback, I will beat him. That's the sort yeah, of yeah. that's the sort of way I think. Right, okay. So but it's just like it's just like the end product with the crossing, maybe the right decision, maybe you don't need to cross it, maybe you can just mm. do a little one give and go or something. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it alters quite quite right, a lot okay. of the time. Akechi, can I wish you and Oxford City every success for the remainder of the season. Thanks Akechi. Thank you very that's much. Great.